Coming on the heels of the tepid Torchlight 3 and its paint-by-numbers design, I started to reflect on what made it fall short and what could be introduced into the grindfest genre to keep it fresh. By the way, I say paint-by-numbers instead of vanilla because vanilla is a really underrated great flavor that gets a bad rap. Then, almost in reply across the transom comes Hades by Supergiant Games. This roguelike ARPG newly out of early access introduces several innovative concepts that make the grind feel fresh again. Not only that, but they've managed to do it with style, humor, and a respect for your playtime, which portrays a real care in every stage of development. Would you enjoy accompanying Zagreus on his escape from the netherworld? Let's find out. The first thing that'll strike you about Hades is its art style. While we've all seen that highly stylized, cel-shaded look, but there's something about this game's anime-inspired characters and amazingly blended animations that make it look just that one step ahead of its competition. As you begin the game, emerging from a pool of blood near Hades' entryway, you're greeted by a line of people waiting to be judged by your father, the eponymous Hades himself. <coughs> yes, carry on everyone, don't mind me. At this point, you'll be tempted to sit back and marvel at the animations, the colorful and detailed design, and even the environmental scripting playing out in the background. The second thing that you'll notice is the standout writing. Our protagonist, Zagreus, straddles the line between being a rebellious, snarky teen and a classic hero's journey protagonist. His long journey from the land of the dead is littered with moments of humor, narrative points, and sights that keep you invested in the story. A commemorative board adorns one of the stoic walls within the lounging area, celebrating and proclaiming the accomplishments of those who serve Lord Hades best of all. Won't ever see my face up on that wall, I guess. Of special note is his interactions with fellow deities and Hades' other denizens, and it's on par with the classic writing of LucasArts' adventures, and that's a very, very high bar indeed. Why, hello, hello there, little god thing. The conversations Zagreus has with both his immediate kin and his distant relative gods of Olympus are so delightfully written, contextually accurate for your progress, and tautly written, I actually looked forward to them instead of spamming the A button. Far be it from me to raise my hand against your father, Tim Nephew. Although I do suppose old Hades has it coming, doesn't he? As you fight your way up from the land of the dead, you'll encounter a clever variety of craftily designed and wonderfully animated monsters, each appropriately themed to its area. Love that sulfur smell. Your attack skills are defined by your weapon type. This could be, you know, sword, bow, pike, etc. And each weapon that you unlock has a standard and special attack, neither of which manage to feel useless. You have this red jewel thrown grenade style that may be freely reused only after recovering it. The final fundamental skill is a dash. I listed all of these skills in rapid succession to add that each can be modified with enhancements, typically derived from collecting pickups. Of course, all these buffs and skill upgrade increases reset on death. No, no. Fortunately, control is so snappy and responsive, unlike in Torchlight 3, that you never feel cheated by controller lag. Animations feel so finely tuned that you'll become a whirling, darting death dancer in no time. Kudos to Supergiant Games for giving this aspect the attention it deserves. The third feature is the game's progression system. And at this time, let me make an admission. Sometimes I'd rather spend time grinding up a character, especially when the gameplay is as good as this, into a superhuman killing machine instead of depending on my own average skills. To me, roguelikes without permanent improvements feel like a waste of time. Interestingly, Hades appears to have its balance adjusted so well that it could be played and enjoyed by those like me and those who can complete the game without taking a single hit at level 1. It's a rare feat that should be celebrated and should help ensure this game has a much wider audience than it would otherwise. And the upgrade paths are plentiful indeed. There are keepsakes to collect and equip which provide bonuses. These two can be leveled by meeting various criteria. 
There's a dark currency used to buy permanent personal stat boosts. There are jewels to collect, which may then be used to unlock new room types. Finally, there are keys for unlocking new weapons and more. Honestly, there are so many paths to upgrade that feel significant and worthy of investment. And I, I really suppose that's the trick, making you feel that you're not only having a great time playing, but that you're always making progress, even when you fail. Moving right along. The final pillar in this very solid construction is Hades' breadth of content. Each zone has a unique art direction and cast of enemies, but it's what happens in those zones that really makes the game interesting. Beyond the typical kill every monster to proceed rooms, you'll find Karan's shop, challenge rooms, treasure troves, mid-boss fights, story-driven boss fights, and even more features unlockable given sufficient jewels. The thematic rooms really break up the monotony of level traversal and make each walk through the underworld feel novel and substantial. Supergiant Games stated that they were very proud of the breadth of content they provide, and now I understand why. There's one very subtle yet game-changing feature that's so easy to overlook. When exiting a room, look at the symbol over each exit point. Its icon will enable you to decide which challenge you want to face next and will influence the word you'll receive from it. I found this seemingly small change to actually be a game-changing mechanic. You can focus on collecting keys, gems, or other resources. Other times you'll desire a health buff or a visit from a specific deity. This is just one of those features that demonstrates a focus on attention to detail, quality of content, and a real desire to make an enjoyable game. If I were forced to try to reduce Hades to the back of an envelope, it would be fighting your way through randomly generated levels against differently themed monsters, being sent back when you die, spending resources to unlock things and get stronger than trying again. But to do so would be to grossly sell the game short. Of course you do all these things, but the most important thing in a game where there is repeated grinding is that the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is fun. Very fun. I mean, it's what you're going to be doing 99% of the time, so it really had better be. It also helps that play evolves over time via the introduction of new challenges, new skills, and mechanics. That's another area where Torchlight 3 fell apart. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay was holding down your primary controller button, and 12 hours later you were still wading through mobs and holding down the same controller button, but with greater numbers floating up the screen. I'm very happy to say that Hades keeps it fresh and introduces several fun twists with such style that most ARPG or roguelike fans will love it. Cheers, Hypnos. Hades was developed and published by Supergiant Games, the studio behind indie classics Bastion and Transistor. It's available today on Steam and Switch for around $25 and it's absolutely worth that price. Just checking on Steam, it seems the overall opinion is very much in line with mine. Pick it up on PC, then pick it up again later when it comes out on console. So that's our first look at Hades. If you've played it, what was your experience? Please leave a comment below and let us know. Also feel free to add any questions or suggestions. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell. It would be greatly appreciated and really helps out a lot. Thanks for watching.